Hi and welcome to this short video where I'd like to show you some of the new features that are in Polarian uh, release 2404. Um, so I've got the early access uh, release of Polarian 2404 installed on my machine here which I can show you. So just also bear that in mind as it's an early access release some of the features are still being finalised. But uh, let's jump into Polarian and let me show you some of the new features. So the first one I'd like to show you is around automatic merge. So uh, to do this, we need to have a, a document with some work items in it. So here I've created a, um, a master document and what we need to do is create a branch of this document um, and then we'll make some changes in the master and the branch. And then I can show you how the automatic merge feature works in, in that. And this might be a scenario where you have um, some requirements. Maybe this is version one of the requirements and uh, some development needs to start work uh, based off these initial requirements. And, and then in parallel, the requirements have been updated to say version two. And so you might want to do some automatic merging um, between uh, documents that way and keeping the work items up to date between them. So I'm here in the master document, so let's create a branch. So just to make it clear, I'll call this the branch document. And if we go into that, we can see here, it's a, a copy of it, but you can see all the work items here, are referenced work items because of the dotted line on the side. And uh, what we'll do is in the master document, we'll uh, go to the bottom here and we'll create a new work item and let's call this around accessibility and I'm just going to copy and paste a, some a requirement into here and let's save that so that's a new uh, work item now that's in the master and perhaps also in the branch as, as the development's happening there's perhaps some refinement or some additional requirements that, that get generated so here I'm just going to create one uh, around modularity. And again, I'll just copy paste that for the sake of time. And so now I've got uh, new work items in the master, new work items in the branch. So what we can do is from the branch document, we can see there's a new menu item here called merge. And here we can push the changes to the master or we can pull the changes from the master. We can also do, as we had before in Polarion, the comparison so you can compare this branch to the master document. Let me quickly show you what that looks like. And so this is the very familiar um, comparison feature that we can see in Polarion. You can see what's what's new, what's been new and added between them. You can see there's a little bit of confusion here over the, the work items, but we can go into that work item view. And here it's very easy to see uh, what's in the master document and what's in the branch document. And actually when we click on this, um, this button up here, uh, this is the, the merge sidebar, we can then uh, do some actions based on these changes. So for instance, in the master document, we could pull this in to the branch by clicking in this direction. And we can say it's like a, a, a live reference, which is the same as all the other references um, so we can bring that in or we could freeze the reference with that option or we could actually just create a copy a duplicate of the, the work item and uh, if we were perhaps went for this work item that's in the branch and not in the master again you can choose to copy that work item into the master so that it keeps updated so this is the manual process that already existed in Polarian um, but what's new I'll just come back to this menu here, the merge, is we can uh, choose to, for instance, push to master. And here we have the automatic option and it will create a baseline, which is recommended. Uh, you can also do that with a preview. So we can preview what it's gonna do, you can see it processes, and it's gonna tell you that there's um, uh, a work item that, that needs updating. So we can proceed if we wanted to, but just to show you that we can get to that same screen 
of the manual merge if we go through this option at the bottom here and here we're back into that same screen where we can then choose the work items and choose the actions we want based on these these arrows here but um, let's say we we want to perform that automatic merge so we we want to pull all the changes um, sorry we want to push the, the changes from this branch document into the master we'll leave automatic and we'll create a baseline and there we go and so you can review the changes if you want to but here we can go into the master document and here you can see then that the two work items now exist and this one was brought over from the branch document and again we can go back into the branch document if we wanted to and we can do a merge and we can pull from master and because if we're sorry let me show you if we go to the bottom here you can see there's only one work item in this section so what we can do is go to that merge menu item and we can pull from the master again we'll leave it as automatic but we will create document baseline and so when we pull that now we've done a push and a pull in both directions and you can see both are there and you can see it's inserted this one as a referenced work item because of the dotted lines there so that's the the work item that exists in the in the master so that's the new feature um, is the ability to very quickly and easily push changes to the master or pull them from the master into a, into a branch document. Um, so yeah, this, this menu is, is the new thing and it gives you the options to choose automatic or with preview or to do that manual that was the functionality that previously existed. Okay, so the next topic is around REST API and previously in Polarian, uh, you would need to enable the REST API through uh, the polarian.properties file. That's still the true in the 2404 release. Um, so that needs to be done on the server um, so that you can enable the REST API. But what's changed here, what's new, is you can now change the uh, accessibility of that REST API to various user groups using permission management. So I've come in here to the administration interface and you can see at the bottom, towards the bottom here, we've now got this REST API endpoints uh, section within the permissions management. And so here on the various um, um, methods, so you can change the permissions for a GET uh, call on the, the REST API and so you can change it on the GET, the patch, the POST and the DELETE. So for instance, uh, project admin here is selected as being able to delete via the um, via the via the REST API, and that's probably an, an appropriate level of um, permissions to set on the delete function. You only want probably maybe the admins to do be able to do that. Um, but you here on the get function, sorry on the get method, uh, you can see uh, we can probably set that permission where we can change it. So we can come in here and say for the project user, we can grant that permission. And so now those project users uh, will be able to use the REST API using the get method. So that's a really cool function. So you can tune the uh, permissions and the various um, methods on the, on the API for the different user groups and the user roles uh, within a project. So I should also say that when you enable the REST API, um, the admin users, um, so users with the, the global admin role, uh, will still have full functionality to the REST API. Um, but other users, you'll need to configure them through this permissions management through an appropriate role so they can use the, the REST API. Okay. So the next topic is around test management. Uh, there's a couple of new features here which are, which are really interesting. So in my demo project here, I'm going to go into test runs. You can see I've got a, um, a test run set up here, uh, which has got a couple of tests um, waiting to be executed. So let's go ahead and execute those tests. Let's generate some, some data. And 
So let's just do, I'll just quickly go through this, set these all as passed. And the overall I can say is passed, but um, I'm just going to put a statement which is incorrect into this uh, comment block. And you'll see why I do that in a second. So I'll just do that as save as passed. Of course, we have to do a signature. And so now it's the second test case. I'll just quickly go through and also mark those as passed. And just give that an electronic signature as well. So when we come back into the overall test run, we can then have a look at the, the records. And here you can see here is the two that I've just performed. And this is the same as functionality as before in Polarian. We can come in and have a look at this. But here you can see this um, test re record here has got this statement, which is incorrect. And it'd be a shame to have to rerun that whole test just to um, amend that that piece of data within the test record. So this is the new functionality now within Polarian 2404 is you have the ability to go into a test record and correct and amend uh, the, the information within it. So I'll go ahead and go in there and here you can see we can change things like we can change the overall pass fail if for instance that was a, a mistake and we want to go and correct that. Uh, but here we can just go in and just change change that 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 final statement and then we'll update that test record uh, we'll do the electronic signature and when we go back now and have a look at the test run records here you can see we've still got the two records but that statement has now been changed so that's a really great ability to be able to go in and, and correct uh, information that might might be mistaken within a test record we can, if we wanted to, we can still retest. We can run the whole test again. Um, and that's in the little drop down, and that's what we were able to do before in Polarian. The other thing we can do is we have the ability to go in here and and delete the the test record uh, altogether. So that will remove that test from the test run. And here you can then see we've only had uh, one test case. Uh, in fact, it's gone and removed the whole of the test case from the test run. So if we wanted to go back and add that in again, we can go back in, select the test case. And you can see it's removed it. Um, I'm a little surprised at that. I thought it would have just deleted the just the record and not removed the whole test uh, from the test run. But um, yeah, maybe that's um, a little bit of a feature that's still work in progress. So here we can come back, we can see that now that there's that one that executed, here's the one that's pending again. So we just added it back in. But that's the, the new features here is uh, the ability to correct what's in inside a test record, a previous test record, and then the ability to delete certain records. The other thing which is new is if we go back into that um, test run and we go back into the selected test cases, uh, you can see here there's now a drop down. So you're able to choose which test run uh, you want to amend and modify straight from the sidebar here. You don't need to kind of go back into the test. So if, for instance, here I've come into the, the first one. And here you can see I've got the two tests selected for that. And if I wanted to then do some planning around the second one, it's very quick and easy to do that. And so then you could maybe modify and save that one. So that's a, a new functionality is being able to select the test run from the sidebar here. Okay, and then there's just some other features, other improvements that um, have happened within Polarian which I'd like to show you. And if we go back into a document here, for instance, and here you can see I've got a, a, a bit of text, uh, which is for the table of contents. And let's say I want to change the color of that to match this one here. So one of the new uh, functionalities is being able to select a color using this little dropper. So I can click on that and then I can scan through my document and I'll choose that color there 
and so now it's very quickly and easily picked up that color. So that's a new function, new feature is the color picker. So whenever you choose these colors before you'd have to kind of figure it out and add it manually, but now you've got the um, a recently used a color using the little picker. So that's, that's a great functionality there. Uh, one of the other uh, interesting new features is if you go into a work item view, and so actually if I go into the tracker view, that's probably even better. And so here you can see I've got a work item and I can scroll through as I can normally do, but there's now this new icon here, which takes you straight to the top. So it's a little shortcut so rather than having to scroll down and then having to scroll back up. In particular, if a work item has got a lot of fields and a lot of information, when you're in a certain point, you can just click on the button and it'll jump you straight to the top. So one of the other things which is uh, new is within the date picker. So I'll just demonstrate that using the query here. So I'll just do um, created and here you can see I've got the date calendar picker that's popped up and you can see here the week numbers have been added uh, in the calendar. So that's really helpful when you're working with week numbers, they automatically appear now in the, in the picker. Okay, so one of the other features or a couple of other features are more in the administrative side of things. So let me go into the administration. And uh, one of the things was around the personal access token. So as before, you can generate a personal access token and this can be used in particular for like the REST API, uh, but I'll just create a my token and just set it to expire tomorrow and create that token. And there is a, a token that I can use for this machine. And in fact, here you can see there's a previous one I've created as well. But the new functionality is you're able to renew that token. So here's one that I created uh, yesterday. So let me go in and renew that one. And it pops up a little message to say that um, you're gonna have to update um, the token, the token is provoked and a new one is, is replaced in its place. So you can just click OK and you can see then here's the token and you can copy that new token and update where it's being used. But that's a really handy little feature. It'll just go ahead and renew it for 90 days. Um, if you wanted to, you can then still revoke and remove tokens in the normal way. Um, but yeah, that renew is a, is a great little shortcut so you can keep all of the details of the token and just update it. Okay, and lastly, um, there's a great feature where you can um, have a look at users. And if I go into, um, maybe I'll go into the global users here. Uh, so here you can see, uh, let's look at, for instance, um, this particular user, um, what you can then see in the details here is the license that they've got assigned. So this is really handy. You don't have to necessarily go into the license section. You can very quickly and easily see what kind of what type of license that user has. And other users, for instance, you can see this one doesn't have a license assigned to them. But, um, but yeah, that's just a neat little way of just seeing which licenses are assigned. Okay, so that's all of the uh, features that I wanted to show you. And so let me know if you have any questions, uh, get in touch with us if, um, if you have any queries about the new features or you wanted to a more in-depth explanation, be more than happy to, to show you more. So there we go, that's Polarian 2404.